Fascinating look there, Sandra. Hezbollah calling for a day of unprecedented anger after a Gaza City hospital blast leaves reportedly, according to Hamas, hundreds of people dead. It comes as fighting intensifies along Israel's border with Lebanon, sparking concerns a second battlefront will open up north. And we are now learning Hezbollah is far larger and more equipped than Hamas terrorists. Let's bring in Adam Bowler, Abraham Accords negotiator. He's with us. Adam, good to have you with us. Let me get, first of all, what's your take on everything that's going on here? I mean, I think what you're seeing is this next phase of the war. And there are two elements that are happening right now. And the biggest element is the media war. And so you see the immediate rush uh, to blame Israel after what happened on the hospital side when it was actually Palestinian Islamic Jihad. So I think that's going to be a major phase um, that comes up. And then the other thing that I think you saw is the administration's attempt, uh, which is, I, I think, well-intentioned uh, to try to bring some countries together to think about a post-Hamas world. You know, I'm just looking at these pictures from Gaza City, and it's the first time that I have seen ground-level shots of the parking lot. If that was an Israeli bomb, shouldn't there, Adam, be a big bomb crater in the middle of that parking lot? 100 percent. I mean, the intelligence is pretty clear right now that you had Palestinian Islamic Jihad shooting a rocket, uh, shooting it from a cemetery behind the hospital, uh, and then a backfire, which happens actually a lot. It's just in this case, it was unlucky. It backfired and hit a hospital. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about, um, we're getting another alert on my phone. Just want to make sure, no, it's Tel Aviv again. It's not us. Um, I wanted to ask you about the potential for a second front opening in the north of the country, because Israel has said, in response to the, the explosion at the hospital, that Israel's time is up. Uh, Iran has also said that Israel will experience another shockwave if it continues its pursuit of Hamas in Gaza. I, I want to put up this graphic here. This is call for number one. Uh, back in 2006, when Hezbollah was raining rockets down on Israel, it didn't even have anything that would uh, hit Tel Aviv. But now take a look at the radii of all of these different missiles that it has. It, it can't get quite as far south as uh, Eilat down there on the Gulf of Aqaba, but it can hit every major Israeli city. If a second front were to open in the north, Adam, and Hezbollah were to go to its arsenal of, of some 100,000 rockets, what would that mean for this country? I mean, I think it'd be really significant. By the way, this is the result of years of appeasement on the Iran side. Uh, and this is why that doesn't work, because people can smuggle in missiles and build up in this time. And I think it's highly likely that the North gets involved here. So what does it mean for Israel? It means that this is going to become a bigger deal. Uh, and the United States has to stand behind and support. Uh, Israel can handle things from a military perspective. But I will tell you that as this expands in the court of public opinion and how this drives, it's going to be a big deal going forward. So, so we have a president who is still talking in fairly uh, uh, ambiguous terms, and it's not strategic ambiguity either. It's, he's just talking rather in, in ambiguous terms about Iran. This is call for number three. This is the president earlier today. Listen. The world will know that Israel is, str Israel is stronger than ever. And my message to any state or any other hostile actor, thinking about attacking Israel remains the same as it was a week ago. Don't. Don't, don't. That, that, that is one fewer don'ts than he issued on Sunday night on his 60 Minutes interview. But other presidents in the past, when they have sent warnings to countries to not get involved, have been using far stronger language than that. I think there's language and then there's action. And so I think it's very, it's got to be very clear what's going to happen if Hezbollah gets involved, if Iran gets involved, and it has to be backed up by the U.S. military. And so those warships we sent in, are they willing to act if that happens? Are they willing to fire on Hezbollah positions if Hezbollah positions start to attack Israel? That's real backup from an action perspective, and that's where we need to lean in. Uh, the America fired on Hezbollah back in 1983 after the embassy bombing killed so many American service members. Americans have died in this. That might give them the impetus to go ahead and do it. Adam, good to see you. Thanks very much. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me on, John.